I'm gonna do a quick run over of what's happened in PHP in the last probably six months since I did this talk. So it's been actually a surprising amount that's happened. So 8.3 got released um, four months ago now. So that's pretty fun. I've got another slide showing my favorite features in 8.3, but there's not that much. It was a pretty small release, pretty easy to upgrade to. Um, although I still haven't done it because I have dependencies that don't support it yet, unfortunately. But um, for that release, it's actually, we've seen like quite a big uptick in contributions to PHP recently. So there was like 1,200 commits to that particular version. Um, and from the PHP Foundation, which if anyone doesn't know, like two years ago, um, like this group of people got together and started like trying to raise money and organize and like pay people to work on the PHP code base, which like historically it's been like just random volunteers in the community, which means that there was only for like four or five people that actually worked on PHP. And then one of the main guys got a job when he left uni and decided he wasn't going to work on PHP anymore. And the whole community kind of shit their pants a little bit. Um, so then a bunch of big companies got together and threw a shitload of money at this foundation and now they employ a bunch of people to work on the code base. So 280 commits for PHP 8.3 came from them. Uh, in total, there was 114 contributors, which is like much higher than usual. And um, there was 23 RFCs, 13, oops, sorry, 18 of which passed. So only a handful failed. So there's a lot of, a lot of action happening lately. Um, did I misspell foundation there? It's fine. Um, <clears throat> but also, twice a year, um, one of the guys that works at Composer releases um, some statistics on like what versions of PHP everybody is using. Um, so people that aren't using Composer get excluded from this, which generally skews the PHP versions upwards, because people that aren't using Composer, I think, are more likely to not use supported versions of PHP as well. But in general, you can see like the share of the market of like 7.2 or like seven versions getting smaller, which is good because they're not supported anymore. And eight is growing and you can see 8.3 coming in here just in January. Um, you can look over time at like historical versions. I don't know if that looks very good on the screen. It's not too bad. Um, like the uptick of different versions over time. Um, and so you can see 8.3 is like still a relatively slow uptick compared to some of the like seven versions, um, which probably represents the fact that there's not that much exciting in it as if you look at like 7.4 specifically, I think had a heap of really cool shit. So it just goes up massively. Same with funnily enough, 5.6 way back in the day. I think that's when they brought in like object oriented and like a bunch of the kind of main things you need to write software. Um, <clears throat> this one's interesting as well. They take the top like, 1,000 packages on Packagist uh, and look at what their minimum supported PHP version is to see like kind of what library maintainers are supporting. And it's interesting how low of a version a lot of libraries actually support, like down to 5.2 even. Um, but general same trends of like eight getting a, versions eight and above getting like a bigger share of the market there. Um, <laughs> So when 8.3 was released, like I said, it was a relatively small release, but there's a few things that I, the very subjective list of the best features in um, 8.3. The best one I like is they have this new like override attribute that you can put on your methods when, when you override a method from a parent class. Does nothing except it will throw like an error if you're like overriding a method that doesn't exist or, um, like writing a method that shouldn't, something like that. Just gives you better like static typing, the same as you get from like Java when you have to put like at override on your methods and things like that. Um, to just ensure that you're overriding things properly, like often if you change like the parent class name of a um, method, there's no way to enforce that all your subclasses actually update as well. Type class constants is a fun one as well. So when you define a constant, you can give it a, tell it's a string or an integer or something like that and they improved exception handling for date times so like exceptions that get thrown if you're trying to parse dates are now like better and like more grouped towards like errors and exceptions and things so you can catch specific types of date time errors instead of like having to catch all or none 
Um, as I said before, the PHP Foundation had um, a lot of work over the last year as well. They added four new developers. Um, so now they have 10 developers that they're paying part-time salaries to work on PHP. Um, for those four new developers they hired last year, they had like 207 applicants. So there's like a pretty big process of kind of um, getting through that. And also they had 400 grand of like donations from various like companies and stuff um, to run the foundation. And as I said before, the number of contributions for PHP over the last year grew by like 80% almost. So that's pretty good to see that the foundation is kind of doing what it set out to do. And it's like to de-risk around PHP and the developers. But the most fun thing that's happened is development on PHP 8.4 has started and there's quite a few things. Um, they're mostly small things so far, but there's a lot of new RFCs being discussed and voted on at the moment, so um, stay tuned. But um, one of the first things coming in is like a multi-byte version of like uppercase and lowercase, the first character of a string. Um, previously, if you wanted to do that with like um, non ETF-8, I think, if you're dealing with like multi-byte characters like in other languages that are not defined by America, then you have to do like this sort of shit where you substring it and take the first letter and then uppercase it and then substring the rest of it and it's a nightmare. So now you've just got two cool functions to do that for you really easily. Likewise, they've added a multi-byte multi -byte trim method so you can trim the white space characters off the end and start of um, strings really easily. Um, trim by default starts with like, it has like a list of white space characters that it trims. Uh, and then you can change it to trim whatever you want if you choose to. But the multi-byte functions actually extend the list of default characters so it'll trim off like spaces and things like that that are defined in like other text encodings, not ETF-8. Spaces um, in foreign languages? Yeah, exactly. Like <laughs> Japanese spaces and stuff, they get trimmed as well. It's great. It's just different. Um, somehow. This is a fun one that I learned several hours ago. Um, has anyone ever used or heard of this like HTTP response header variable? Um, yeah, so if you use like the file get contents method and you pass in an, like a URL, um, it just like magically creates this secret variable called HTTP response header, which then contains like a list of the headers that were on that HTTP response. Um, so then, but that variable, I guess, kind of thankfully, is like a locally defined variable, so it do, it's not global, which kind of surprises me because a lot of PHP things are global. But so it's like it's not defined outside of your function here, and you can kind of get it in here. Um, interesting thing is they wanted to deprecate this in PHP 8.1, but there was not really an alternative to like actually getting the headers of that HTTP request, so they didn't deprecate it. But now, well, that's an example of what the, the variable looks like, just all the headers on your HTTP request. Uh, now they've added these two new functions, um, which essentially replicate it. So get last response header is, it returns the exact same thing as the variable, and clear last response header um, allows you to like set it to nothing again so you can um, get rid of it. So that means that in future, we can deprecate that variable and get rid of it. The fun thing about that is the way that that variable is defined, there's like something weird in like the C code where there's like this one particular code path that literally only exists to support this one variable now because of all the cleanup that's happened over the years. So like if we can get rid of that variable, there's like a good chunk of the underlying C code that they can just like clean up and do like a pretty big improvement. So. They're yeah, interested in doing that. There was comments around like, we could just get rid of it and not deprecate it. And that sounds scary. <laughs> I'm probably meant to deprecate these things, but anyway. Um, also, I don't know if I had a, didn't have an example, but there was another um, variable exactly like this, like PHP error code or error status or something, which works the exact same way. Um, and it was like, if you get like a generic PHP error, it would create this random variable for you. And they solved it in the same way as they created like PHP get error last and PHP clear error last. Like this was a few versions ago that they did that so that they could get rid of that variable as well. 
Um, <clears throat> the just-in-time compiler, they're changing the default like INI settings for it uh, in 8.4, which doesn't actually really change anything because the default settings are your JIT is disabled. Um, but interesting reason is like it's actually disabled by default because they set the buffer size to zero, even though the setting that you're meant to use to disable it is turned on by default. So um, now they're just like actually using the correct setting to disable it by default and giving your buffer size like a more sane <coughs> default value. Shouldn't really affect anyone unless you are kind of relying on the buffer size to enable your JIT at the moment and you're not manually setting um, this property, then like when you upgrade, it'll just like disable your JIT. So maybe check that. But um, apart from that, it seems pretty sane. Um, another thing that they're doing is deprecating this like implicit null that you can see in here. So since whenever it was when they introduced typed um, parameters in like 7.1 or something, um, and you didn't have this ability to have like two types on like or nullable types, you could do this and it gives you a nullable type by like setting a default value. Um, so technically this actually changes the type to be like a null T2 instead of just T2. Um, but since then they've actually tried to deprecate this. So like this is actually setting like a default value on the, your B parameter and you're not meant to be able to have default values and then have more parameters after it that don't have default values. So, and it's made it really hard to like actually remove that functionality from the code base. Um, so now they're deprecating this. So this will now throw a deprecation error. And instead you have to go and like either type it as nullable or type it as nullable like this. Either of these ways will remove the deprecation error. Um, and at some point it will throw an exception. I imagine probably in PHP 9. Is it just because it's not the last variable? Like if that was the last variable, it's still throwing an exception? Uh, no, it's because it, you're typing it as T2, but yeah. then you're setting its default value to null. Okay. So like you have to type it as null T2 in order to do that. But then separately, having a default value as like a non-last parameter is also deprecated, like as of a couple of versions ago anyway. Yeah. Um, so has anyone this is also something I learned today. Has anyone ever used this like DOM document thing to like you can actually parse like HTML files in PHP and it gives you like a definitely use the XML <laughs> stuff, but not yeah, right. DOM. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So um this DOM document thing only supports HTML4 and below. It doesn't support HTML5. So if you try and load like a HTML5 document inside this DOM document class, then it just kind of blows up, um, which is unfortunate because HTML5 has been around for quite a while now. So they're actually creating this whole new class, um, which has like a proper namespace now instead of being in the global namespace. But HTML document, it's got like a better API as well. You can create an empty document, or read from a file or a string. Um, and now it supports HTML5. They've also added this XML document thing, which is meant to just like, it re-implements DOM document like exactly, except with like a better API. So then you can sort of migrate to this better API, but not have to worry about any breaking changes introduced in HTML5. Um, but they're not specifically not changing DOM document or even deprecating it at the moment. So like it doesn't actually affect you if you don't want to change. But if you want to read HTML5, you soon will be able to. Um, oh, another fun thing I learned today. I had a great day today. Um, did you know that if you do, like, if you try to send data with a non-post request, specific, like, multi-part form data, so, like, uploading files, if you try and do that with, like, a put or a patch, then it just doesn't work in PHP. Like, you can't get it because it only populates your post your underscore post variable, underscore files variable on post requests. Okay. I don't, I'm surprised I haven't come across that before. Mm -hmm. Is that because the framework still for you? Or? Uh, 
maybe like it could be framework somehow getting that data out. I don't know how they would if it's not populated in these. Most frameworks are still just using posts because most yeah. web servers still only handle posts. They don't actually handle puts. Yeah. So Laravel does it by just sending the post with an underscore method equals put. Uh, yeah, that's so a it's it's a it's a trickery <laughs> over a post to actually get it to push into the mm -hmm. right method for the router. Yeah, right. So there was a reason, and it was a big reason that I read the introduction for it. There's a reason, mostly historical, that they don't do that. But instead of, I guess, fixing it, instead they're giving us a way of like getting the like resetting those variables whenever we want. So I mean, you don't have to read it into underscore post underscore files, but at any point you can call this like request parse body and it will give you back like your files that were uploaded or the post data. I don't know about Laravel, but I know in Symfony they like blow those variables, those super globals away, like after processing the request. So I don't even know if it'll work, but in Symfony, but maybe it will. Um, we've int well, we're introducing some new rounding modes into the round method as well. So you can, the, we do have a method, seal and floor, which allow you to like round numbers, um, floating point numbers to the ceiling or their floor, but they they round it to like the whole integer value, whereas the round method allows you to round to like a specific number of decimal places. So you can round to like two or three decimal places, however you want. <laughs> um, but it, I can't remember what it defaulted to, but now you have these extra properties that you can either round to ceiling or floor or away from zero or towards zero. Default rounding method is PHP round half up. Round what, sorry? Round half up is the default if you don't provide an argument for the round. Okay, rounding half up. I don't, do you know what that actually means, <laughs> what that does? Yeah, so if you've got 4.5 and you apply round on it to no, with no um, mode, it'll go up to five. Uh, um, whereas if you used PHP round half even or bankers rounding, Gaussian rounding, um, that would round it down to four. Um, but if it was 5.5, uh, it would round want the, it rounds it towards whichever the even number. Right would be for the integer. It's common in um, accounting systems to even out rounding issues. Yeah, so it essentially chooses whether you want to round like 0.5 up or down. Yeah, right. Yeah. Fair enough. Anyway, that's all I have. Does anyone have any questions?